Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Art Show. Hooray! Today, I want to <laughs> talk about dating apps. I was doing a little bit of research on dating apps, and I was also fumbling around through Reddit, which I do sometimes. I'm not really a, uh, a Redditor or whatever they call themselves, but every once in a while, I'll find something over there and, and read some information that, you know, it's like, oh, well, that's kind of interesting and also kind of stupid. But anyways, it made me think about dating apps. And I don't know how many of you are using dating apps, but apparently it's a lot of you, including me. I'm, you know, I've used dating apps in the past and I could tell you some funny stories about dating and <laughs> all those experiences that we all have when we use our dating apps. And that's basically what I'm going to be talking to you about today is uh, some of those experiences and how to navigate these dating apps and even a little bit of information about uh, the dating apps themselves. But this is going to be more humorous and it's not going to be a bunch of technical stuff of how to use an app. Lots of people will show you how to use that. That's There's nothing to it. You can figure that out in two minutes. So you don't need me to tell you that. But I found out some really interesting information. Get a load of this. There are over 8,000 dating apps on Google Play and the Apple Store. Think about that. 8,000 dating apps. It must be everybody and their brother is building a dating app and, and you know throwing it out there. They must either be the easiest things to make on the planet or else... People are making a lot of money off of their dating apps. <laughs> so whichever it is, I'm telling you, it's really, it, it's mind-boggling. 8,000 dating apps. So obviously there's the big ones that most everybody goes to, and I think you guys all know who that is. There's like uh, Tinder and Bumble or Stumble or Tumble or whatever the thing is called, you know, and and uh, what are the other ones? Match and, you know, some of those bigger ones out there that, you know, everybody is pretty much familiar with. And um, and so those those are the ones that are kind of the, the focus of what everybody thinks about when they think about these apps. But I know for me, I like to pick up um, when I have a free time or I'm waiting for something, you know, I'll fumble through my phone and I love to play my little solitaire app. I don't know if you guys have that. It's been, these have been around since, not as an app, but, you know, on Windows and all kinds of stuff since, you know, the 1980s. So anyways, I love playing these little solitaire things because they're a good time waster and, you know, occupies your mind while you're waiting for something like the microwave. <laughs> you know what? I'm waiting for that thing to ding. It's going to be two minutes. I'll play a game of solitaire while I wait for that because I don't want to think about anything else. So anyways... On a lot of these little apps like that, they generate their revenue by all of the little advertisements that they put on there. And so on, on the little solitaire game that I have, the main thing that they have on here is these little advertisements or dating apps. They're just like a billion of them. They're just, every time you get a new game, they're popping up, they're popping up at the beginning, they're popping up at the end, they're just popping up all over the damn place, all of these little dating apps. And so I took some time to... to spend a few minutes uh, going through some of these little dating apps and signing up for them to see what the heck these little things were about because I'd never heard of any of these. Although a couple of them I had heard of and I thought, okay, well, I'll just go ahead and I'll try that one and see see what this whole little app is all about. And I'm going to tell you, it'll blow your mind after I, I show you this. And I'm going to have some screenshots in here. and I'm, So you'll be able to scroll through these with me and <laughs> and take a look at some of these other, you know, non top 10 or 20 apps that are sitting out there so you can kind of see what's what's happening with these things. And so let's just first off before I start this conversation, let's just be perfectly honest about this. People build apps to make money, to take money out of your pocket, right? And to continue getting money out of your pocket. And the best way to get money out of your pocket is not to take it once but to take it all the time, 
right? This is the repetitive sales regimen, right? We need to be having continuous sales from our repeat customers. And the way to do that is to get you to keep paying stuff monthly or to have little add-ons. Ooh, do you really want to respond to the little person who sent you a like? Oh, yeah. So now you got to pay a token or you got to buy this or you got to buy that. And then you can get more of these or you can up boost or you can down boost or you can whatever it is that you're going to get. You can get little watermelons to send to people. You can get little pineapples to send to people. Oh, you can send them a little rose. So all of these little things are made to make them money, not to make you happy and to find more people. It's designed to keep you occupied and to keep playing with their app because they want to make money. And I have no problem with making money. Everybody wants to make money. I do. So I'm not against making money, but I think we should all know up front that's really what the purpose of all of these things is for is not to necessarily find you somebody that you're looking for, but really to continue to take money out of your pocket and keep paying them. They have very little real incentive for most of these apps to um, help you find somebody that you're going to get off of their app. They don't have an incentive to do that. And there's nothing out there making them. There's nothing, nobody saying, I would like to know your percentage of people that are getting blah, blah, blah. I think there's a couple of them out there that, that do that. Um, but I call those more matchmaker things rather than dating apps. Uh, so there's a difference between that, if you ask me. Um, I, I can't remember the name of the of the big one that started kind of this little craze, but you fill out a bunch of forms and information about yourself. And, you know, it's a very complicated thing, like a 57,000 pages and more questions than you even know how to answer. But that's supposed to find you really good matches of your own personality and profile type. And they actually advertise, oh, we found, you know, 7,000 people have gotten married from meeting in our app. So there are places that do that, and, and they like to go see how successful we are, but most of them, they don't give a shit about that at all. They could care less about, you know, how many people you found on a permanent basis. As a matter of fact, they would prefer that you date a whole bunch of people and just have to keep going back to the app to find more people to date. So... Beyond that, so now we've got the 8,000 people that are on there. And then the, the other thing that's, that's interesting is the breakdown of, the, of um, the demographics of the people that use the app. So most of the people that are using the app are in the 18 to 34 age group. But the highest growing number, um, according to um, Statista, which is a site that kind of pulls together a bunch of statistics of different things and publishes them. But, but anyways, they did a little bit of uh, some light statistics on this. And, and it turns out that the fastest growing um, age category is the 55 and over people. So that's the one that's growing fastest. And actually, the 18 to 34 demographic is going down faster. So I, I suspect maybe there's some sort of burnout level when you're – younger and you just go, ah, oh, it's enough. I want to go do something else. And I'm sure some other thing comes along and takes and occupies their time. But the other interesting thing about that is that people on these apps are averaging, averaging, get a load of this, 10 hours a week on dating apps, 10 hours a week on dating apps, you know, swipe left, swipe left, swipe right, swipe left, swipe right. Oh, I can't keep up with my thumb's going to fall off eventually or I'm going to turn into like some weird person, you know, with, with monster thumbs, you know, that, that doesn't even know what to do with them. Like you can put them in a pie and pluck out a plum, you know, the things like they're so huge. So that's the other part of the uh, of the demographics. And then the other part... Uh, at the end or other part of the demographics is the breakdown between male and female on these apps. So, guys, this is mostly for you. So, in these apps, 70% of the people that are on those apps are men. 70%. 30% are women. And it varies, obviously, by app, but that's a pretty good, reasonable demographic breakdown. The men way outnumber the amount of women on these apps. I suspect that it probably changes as you get older because I would suspect as uh, men and women get older and they go from that 55 demographic a little bit higher that maybe the numbers are start 
aren't so stark that there's probably a closer percentage of men and women, mainly because men die earlier than women. That's just, <laughs> those are the stats. You know, I'm not making them up. That's the statistics. Men die earlier than women. Women have a lot of longer lifespan. So consequently, in that, that older age demographic, maybe it's a little bit closer. I don't know because I haven't seen any numbers to break it down. But generally speaking, especially for you you younger guys, and you know who you are because you're the ones that after you get through these apps a while, you start running out of people to swipe. Is it right? Let's see. Swipe. Yeah, you start running out of people to swipe right on that respond to you that are in your age category. So you, pretty soon you're hitting up on the older women. And so now, you know, you're starting on the 40-year-olds and you're going, okay, well, maybe, you know, you know, 40-year-olds, that's not too far off. And then, you know, you kind of run out of those. And next thing you know, you're swiping on the 50-year-olds. And, you know, and maybe you get a hit on a couple of those. And, okay, well, okay, I, I'm in cougar country. You know, I've been there for a while. So now I'm just swiping over here on the right. And I'm, you know, on the older women because the younger ones, there just aren't enough of them for all of the guys that are on these apps. <laughs> you know, that's just the way it goes. So, so it, it's really funny. I don't know why this happens to me, but whenever... Whenever I, I end up dating somebody that I find on one of these dating apps, they always want to share to me this information about uh, the amount of younger guys that that um, hit on them on the apps and the amount of dick pics they get. I don't know why they, they always think like they got to share that to me. I'm thinking maybe I'm thinking maybe they're looking at me going and thinking, you know, that's a guy that's going to send me a dick pic, and I'm just going to shut that off right now by telling him I don't like those dick pics. I don't know what it is. What the, <laughs> what the hell? I never sent one of those in my life. I wouldn't even think about doing that. Anyways, well, you know, anyways. So the thing is, I don't know. They share that information, but it turns out that it seems like a pretty high percentage of women, at least the ones that, you know, that I've talked to, uh, end up getting these, you know, pictures of guys' junk, and who really cares about that? You know, but there's apparently a lot of guys that like to, you know, show off their junk everywhere. You know, like Kanye West, you know, Brett Favre. Oh, remember that? Brett Favre, the football hero, had to show off his junk, too, to somebody, you know, while he was in, a, in the toilet or something. I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember what old Brett was doing. But, you know, there's a bunch of those guys that are out there doing that kind of stuff. Uh, oh, remember uh, Jeff Bezos? Didn't he uh, show off his junk on some pick somewhere, too? You know, we thought he had to share that with everybody. Yeah, we need to see what a billionaire's dick looks like because we've never seen that. That's a billionaire's dick if I've ever seen a billionaire dick. That's it. That's a billionaire dick that I just saw right there. Oh, maybe he has maybe he has a stand-in dick, and he has a double. He has a, a dick double that stands in for him because he, I've, cause I've heard he has, like, a body double. So when he goes out some places, you know, they he doesn't want to be mobbed by people or shot at or something. I don't know what it is. So maybe he has, like, a, a dick double, too. I'm sure that if it was me and I was going to hire a dick double, I'd make sure that the dick double had a, you know, had a pretty good weapon there that was in his trousers. Because I wouldn't, you know, why not? You know, that's the whole point of it, isn't it? Okay, so anyways, so then you got the guys that are off there doing that and, you know, flashing that stuff all over the, the place. So let me tell you guys, you know, really, don't be sending your junk unless... <laughs> <laughs> somebody asked for it. You know, I, I know there are probably apps that are out there that, you know, that are designed for, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, most of these mainline, you know, dating apps are not designed for you to be showing off your junk to every person that, uh, that says, hello, how you doing? So anyways, back to, back to the other part of, uh, about the dating apps, which Again, applies to the guys. I, I think I'll do a, a, a women's one. And so I'm going to show a bunch of pics here, pictures here, and we're going to slide through them on, on a, a couple of these apps. Like I said, I downloaded a couple. And so I'm going to put a, up a couple of things here and make make a few comments about, uh, about you know, these dating apps in general. But by and large, mainly just with the caveat that I told you guys a little bit ago about everybody's out there to make money off their apps. They're not out there to make you, you know, find true love. That's not their goal. So tip number one for you guys that are using this dating, these dating apps. If every girl or you know, woman that you see on there looks like a model, I'm telling you, they're all bots. 
<laughs> all of these apps use bots. They even say so in their in their information that you read. And what they call it is, we may use photos for enhancing the user experience. But what that means is they have fake profiles and they have bots and and that's the way it works. Like this little app that I have right here. If you get an app and you have these women that are showing up the first thing when you when you fire up the app. I mean, just looking at these women, I don't know about you, but you have to take a look at yourself and go, okay, in my town that I live in, am I going to ever cross and find women that look like this by the thousands? I mean, literally just every single profile looks like looks like a top model. And you know, here's another here's another thing. Most most people, when they're putting their, their pictures on these things, yeah, most of them want them to look nice, but most everybody is taking their picture in the bathroom because that's the easiest way to do it, unless you ask a friend to take your picture. So if somebody on there has like, you know, 100 pictures on there and none of them are a selfie, you're pretty sure <laughs> that that's probably a bot. You know, doesn't mean that I'm telling you not to... Uh, you know, respond to them, but that's probably pretty much what's going on there. And another thing, like this app here, I signed up for this app. I won't tell you the name of it. It, it was one of those ones that was advertised on my thing. So I sign up for this app and I go through and of course, I, you know, I'm using this strategy because I just want to see how the whole thing works, right? And so I get, you know, I load up the thing and here's, you know, the first 50 women are just gorgeous looking women, you know, and I'm, so I swipe, you know, I swipe on them. Right, 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 right. I don't even have a picture on my profile. I did the bare minimum. I said like, hi, and that's it. Whatever they let me get away with for characters, I put that on there so I can get to where I could see the pictures. Has everybody done that before? Yeah, you have. Don't lie. You've done it. So anyways, I swipe it on this thing and literally within five minutes, I have like 10 people who have already liked me. Now, what do you think the odds are that somebody found you within the first two minutes of you signing up for an app that's a real person? Hmm? I know probably most of you already know that rule, so I, I, I'm probably not surprising any any of you with, with, with that bit of information. But, you know, if you really think they're those people are real, then you're kind of in Stupidville and don't pay any money to use the app because what what usually happens on every one of these things is the first thing they want to do is get you find you a way to start paying them money. Boom! Oh, you can read their pro full profile if you see this. Oh, you can see all their pictures if you pay this. Oh, you can do this if you pay us more money. So, you know, don't even spend your money and don't even waste your money on it because these guys are just collecting money from you. It's just a revenue stream. <clears throat> and even the the main apps have bots, even, even Tinder and even Match and even Bumble. Even though they say they don't have them, they do. They have fake profiles. Believe me, they do. So they need to fill in because think of it again. The 70-30 ratio. And if it's mostly men on there and they run out of women, the guys are going to leave the app. So uh, it's just math, right? <laughs> it's just simple math. And you go, hmm, yeah, I guess we don't want people, we want them to keep paying the 30 bucks or 40 bucks a month or whatever it is. So we're going to have to create enough profiles on there for them to continue on. And so uh, here's another little tip. If you've been on an app for a while and you've and you've pretty much you know done all the swiping you can <laughs> on the app, what you will find over a period of time, what you'll find over a period of time, is that the amount of fake full profiles that are presented to you increases, and the reason it increases is because you've already gone through the real ones. Simple, 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 simple Simon Metapiman. That that's basically the the whole the whole bit of it. You know, I have a I have this idea that I was thinking about for apps. By the way, now that I'm on that swipe left, swipe right thing, you know what they should do? They should they should wire your 
their app to your phone so that every time somebody swipes left on you, you get like an electro shot. <laughs> oh, somebody swipe left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'll be that it'll be the little electroshock that says, "Oh, your profile sucks." So you better go do something to make it even better. <laughs> so every time you get swipe left, it, or else it'll make you leave the app so that there's more women left on the app and less men. So it gets rid of all the 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 loser, ugly men, and then uh, you know it's only left with with the women and the good-looking guys. So. That's my theory. You should they should wire these things up with a little electric shot. Or maybe, you know, uh if you get swipe right, you'll get like a, a little sort of orgasmic buzzing thing like like a women's vibrator. I don't know how that would work. But you know, you get one of those things if if you get swipe right. You know, it'd be like, oh, that's that's better than those stupid little notifications that they send out, right? That'd be really cool. You get a little Okay. So anyways. That's, you know, my idea behind how to make all these apps even cooler than, than they really are. So another, another bit of information uh, for you guys that are, you know, out there on these apps is, is how to determine to, to read the fine lines in the profiles, right? How do you read between the lines of the profiles that you're reading, if you're reading them? But, you know, I do. I, I generally read those. The, the profiles. I don't know, just go look at their face and swipe because at my age, what the hell, that's not going to make any difference to me. So here's one of the things that, that you, to, to keep in mind. If there's a, if there, <laughs> okay, don't get mad at me, but this is just, you know, my own observations. If there are women out there that are writing like a book, you know, for their profile thing, you really should consider whether or not, you know, you want to go and be dating Chatty Cathy. Because if they can spend that amount of time putting their stuff onto a profile for a dating app, think of what they're going to do to you in person. So you either want to really be a, with a talker or you, you better really rethink what's going on there. Oh, the other one is this. The other one is this. So I get that. I get... I, I don't know if it's happened like once or twice. No, at least once or twice I, I've gotten somebody that's, you know, out of the blue decided that it was worthwhile to, to ping me and tell me that, you know, I don't have enough stuff on my profile. Well, who am I? Fucking John Steinbeck? <laughs> I mean, you know, what do they want me writing? The Grapes of Wrath? I don't know what the hell, you know, is going on here. I think if I write three sentences on my profile, that's pretty damn good. You know, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm thinking, you know, if I'm writing three sentences, I'm really, you know, I'm really taking some time to do those three sentences. You know, I, I spend a lot of time, you know, getting to those three sentences. But now I have another strategy. I decide, I, I found out that if I go to chat GPT or whatever the, the thing is, the chat thing, thingy, and I tell them to write me a, a profile and here's how old I am and, and kind of what I look like, they'll write me a really cool one. That's what I do now. Why the hell should I even think about it? I'm just having my little, uh, you know, AI chat bot write my stuff for me and dumping it on there. I thought that that would, you know, get me a lot more uh, interest from my profile, but, but it hasn't. So apparently my three little sentences are just as good as the as the 10 little cool sentences that the chat bot wrote for me. So AI, you suck. You didn't get me anything. So there you have that. So word to the wise, I don't think anybody's reading your, your profile anyways. They're all just looking at your picture. Even the women are just looking at your picture. So, uh, and my picture sucks. So what am I going to do about that? Oh, I could do an AI, AI picture maybe. Maybe I could put my thing in there and I could just say, hey, just make me look better than, you know, the way I look here. But, you know, that, would, that wouldn't be good because then eventually they might see you in person. Then what are you going to do? Carry around like a little cardboard cut out of your face, put over your face while you're there like this. Ooh, like a little bobblehead thing, you know, a little face on a stick. That wouldn't really be too useful. Although maybe some women would like that. I don't know. I'm just speculating. I don't have any idea what, what they're going to be. Oh, okay. So now that reminds me. The other, the other category is here's... Here's something to, you know, really sort of be aware of, guys, if you see this one on there. When the women say they want somebody that's emotionally available, I don't really know what the hell that means. Do you? Do you? I don't know what the hell that, that freaking means. 
But I think it's just a dog whistle that says, I want a liberal guy who cries a lot. Uh, uh, that's all I can determine. I don't know what else that would mean. You know, I just want a liberal guy who cries a lot, and I'm going to call it emotionally available because I read that somewhere in a book. In some women's book, I read emotionally available, and it's like, yeah, that's the guy I'm looking for, that liberal guy that cries a lot. Now, I am not against crying. I have nothing, I have no, nothing negative about guys crying. But, you know, it has to be for, like, reasonable reasons. Like, like you know, your team loses the World Series. Or or you lose a, a bunch of money in a poker game. Or, or your Wi-Fi goes down at the last seconds of the big game. Those are things worth crying over. So, you know, but pretty much everything else, you know, you're just going to have to write that off. That is, you know... Maybe you could get in, maybe you could get around that by being emotionally available, you know, after the poker game. I don't know what, <laughs> what that means. But there's a, there's just a thing. I'm telling you guys, the emotionally available thing, that is a dog whistle. So you should know that if you're not a liberal guy who cries a lot, then that's not your person. You should just know that. I don't know. I don't know what else they, they think that means. Okay. So now, um, Oh, the other, the other one that they have is this, is that, you know, I have a good life and I don't really need a man, but it would be really great to have someone to, to hang out and do stuff with. Well, here's what this really means, in my estimation. It means that they miss having a guy around to nag and piss at all the time, like, they're, like they did their former spouse or lover. And, you know, they just want somebody around that they can pester into doing shit for them without putting out. That's all it is. That's <laughs> that's what that means. That's exactly what that means. I know how to decipher that. That's what women say. I have a good life, but I don't really need a man. But I still miss having somebody to piss and moan at and, um, you know, bitch and complain to. And and so that's what I need. And I'm not going to put out, so you're just going to have to listen to me, you know, piss and moaning all the time. And and uh, and that's what I need you around for because I don't have anybody to do with because, you know, my women friends won't listen to me anymore. So that's that. I'm just telling you, that's what, that's my observation. That's, you know, my interpretation. I'm sure there are other psychologists that are just going to chew me up on that one, but I don't care because I think I know exactly what that means. Now, here's another thing. I'm, I don't know what the rules are behind responding to people that text you or any of that stuff. I really don't get the rules anymore. I don't, I don't get the rules. So, for example, you know, this whole thing of ghosting. It's, it, is it really ghosting somebody if you exchange, like, two text messages and, hello, how you doing? Nice to talk to you. Boy, I'm really glad that, you know, we connected, blah, blah, blah. And you do that for, like, two text messages. Is it really ghosting if you, if you decide... No, nah, you know, that wasn't really a very interesting conversation, so I don't want to continue. Or they didn't seem like, you know, they really wanted to go too far with the conversation. Is that really ghosting? I mean, to me, I don't think that's ghosting. Do you? I don't know about the guys and the women. Do you think that's ghosting? Or should you, are, you, are you supposed to just say, you know what, you're a crappy conversationalist. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I, I, that's not right either, right? It, it, just because you're on an app it doesn't give you the right to be insulting to people and be rude. Nothing, nothing gives you the right to do that. But at the other end of the spectrum, you know, you, you don't want to be lying about stuff and saying, oh, blah, 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 blah. I had a toothache or my thumbs were broken and I couldn't type for like three weeks or, you know, whatever the heck it is, you know. And so I never got back to you. But to me, there's like a little bit of a cutoff line, right? It's like, well, we never made an arrangement to go meet anywhere or we've been texting for like three weeks and we haven't met. And, and that's the whole point, right? Isn't it? Unless you just say, all I want to do is, you know, text or do sex texting or what do they call it? Sexting? Sex text? It, unless, you know, unless you agreed that that's what you're going to be doing, then at some point in time, don't you really want to be meeting somebody in person? I mean, you know, that's the whole point, right? You know, it's meeting somebody in person and you know, seeing what it, where it goes from there, whatever your, your purpose is. So I don't think that's ghosting in my mind, you know, to just drum it. It's kind of like, it's like, you know, you're standing at the bus stop and 
there's somebody standing next to you and you chat for a little while and you say, hey, hi, oh, hi, nice to meet you, blah, 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 where are you going? Oh, hi, my, you know, my, my name's blah, you know, and, and you talk for a little while and you get on the bus and you don't talk anymore. Would you, is that ghosting? No, nobody would think anything about that. You meet somebody in line at the coffee place and you're standing there and, and you talk back and forth for a couple of minutes. That's not ghosting anybody, right? You're just carrying on a conversation with a stranger. And to me, until you met somebody in person or agreed to go meet somebody in person, um, I, I just don't follow that that could be a, a ghosting thing. And um, so, I, you know, I just, don't, I, I just don't get that that could be a, a, a ghosting deal at all. So um, I don't fall into that category that, that that's... A, that's a ghosting thing. Maybe other people do, but I don't. So anyways, those are my little, my little observation and tips and uh, things about, about dating. One time, another time I'll tell you, you know, maybe some of my own personal experience with dating, but you see, I'm afraid to tell you my personal experience from dating because, you know, quite frankly, you know, after like three months, all, all the women just dump me. They just go, get the hell out of here. You know, I don't want to date you anymore. So I think, you know, that I maybe I come across okay for like three months. And then after that, you know, it's like boredomville or, you know, who the hell is this guy that, you know, I'm talking to? I got to go find somebody that's, you know, seems to be better than that. So anyways, you know, <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you maybe some other, some other cast. I'll give you my experience about that. But on the next one, I think I'm going to do about these dating apps is that I'll do some things for the women so that they have a little clue too about what all of these little uh, hidden things and dog whistles that, that people are putting on there and uh, um, the stupid bill things that they're seeing on their dating apps and, and why it is the way it is. So anyways, um, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, it's The Art Show, and uh, you can catch me on um, YouTube, and you can catch me on Rumble, and uh, almost everywhere there's a podcast. You can also hear me on those, too. Thanks a lot. God bless. Talk to you later.